YPS, we all in balls out. It's a, it's a party, brother, gone, bring them all out. White, black, Puerto Rican, man, I wanna mix. That one right there, red blacks with the leather pussy coffin. I'm so fine for the fine, man, I'm off the reason, brothers, and they might say that I lost it. I want the pussy, we make a superpower. They blow in towers, the rest of jealous for blowing sours. Just a page of exchanges, pace over payload, born sinner. So, once the only thing holding up my halo. Solo talk. Little so, time, but we're doing alright. Yeah. So. This is Eliezer I. Please say hello to the camera and on? introduce yourself. Good people. My name is Eliezer I. I reign from the town of ESPN, which is Bristol, Connecticut, and I'm here being interviewed. Awesome. All right. So are you ready to get started with these questions? Let's go. Okay. So to start off, let's talk a little bit about your background. When did you first start making music and what inspired you to do so? First started making music, I mean, I picked up saxophone around fourth grade, you know, when everybody else kind of picked up their instrument, and after that I started messing around with like keyboard parts, and I really got into producing about eighth grade. That's when I started really starting to make production tracks, and I didn't start making really any type of music music until I'd say sophomore year of high school when I first started. Um, and what inspired me is just, it was self-expression at that point. It really wasn't anything more than that. Um, and I understand you used to go by rapper named Skyrell, which was kind of a spinoff of your real name, which is Kyrell. Mm -hmm. And now you are known as Eliezer I. So can you tell us the meaning behind the new name? I mean, I've always wanted a separation between the two. Um, a lot of people really still had a, they had this mindset that we were the same person. Like me on stage is me in the classroom, which isn't the same. And um, I had a passing of a dear friend, um, Tyrell Walker, and it was, it hit hard. And he's always been that type of person to be like, yo, I think we were really, we were really interested in like the whole concept of the third eye and do a name change or anything like that. And I was like, you know what? I'll keep it off the books, but after, um, his passing, I really wanted to do an ode to him, so I put that in the name, and Eliezer um, actually comes from a family name, um, as well as a few other things. So I, I, I really wanted people to have more of a, instead of having a stage name, it's a, it's, it's a me name, it's a family name, it's a name that is really close to me. I wanted people to really know yeah, me. So all you consider yourself a poet, which is also mentioned on your Facebook page. Yes. And earlier, I explained to you the use of the show, Tell Example by James Brunson 3, that it's kind of... I guess, a way for kids to show self-expression in the classroom. Do you support the use of hip-hop in the classroom setting? Absolutely. I mean, I, and it's not the first case I've heard about it. Um, there's been plenty of cases where there's a university in Georgia that just started using Kendrick Lamar's um, Good Kid, Mad City album as a part of the curriculum in their composition class. You know, people have been using it for years when it comes to just hip-hop and hip-hop influence, just movies and, you know, I, I think you should be able to appeal to all people in the classroom. You know, there, there, there's no reason why when you're covering a music class that Beethoven should be more emphasized than Tupac. You know, it's, it's, yeah. they, they, a lot of people pull a lot of different things and it, they just gotta realize that people come from so many different walks of life that to be able to bring that into the classroom will not only hook them into the class, but also in turn make the class better for them. Gotcha. And on the personal level of music, can you relate to the theory that hip hop music is a voice for misunderstood and challenged youth? I can see that. I mean, when it started, it was it was really just a hip hop, in its very roots was a liberation. It was it was just it was a speaking out. It was trying to get our voices heard, and that can be said for almost any music genre. People, you know, people say metal now is the you know the genre of misunderstood youth, but it's just a different side of it. You know, depending on what background you come from, is you know what you're going to pull from. So, as well as hip hop, as well as other genres, can be said as just a way of voicing an opinion, a way of voicing how we view as a way of life. What about jazzy? <laughs> jazzy, jazzy. Um, I understand you do a lot of performances and record and just musical work in general with your sister, yes. Jasmine, Jazzy, Jade oh. Clemens. And so clearly you guys are very close and you support her and she supports you. Absolutely. So are you a supporter of the recent feminist movement with hip hop? I grew up in a household with Three females to two guys. Um, I'm 110% behind it. I always believe that everybody has their own shot in being able to express whatever it is that they need to do. You know, I was completely behind the new feminine wave of hip hop artists. I used to like it back when it was 
Queen Latifah and Lauren Hill and uh, Missy Elliott, you know, that are around. And I was missing that of the modern day hip hop. So when, you know, Nicki Minaj and Iggy Azalea and, you know, other artists like them started to come through, I really started to see hip hop back in its prime again. I really started to like it. So I'm 110% behind the feminism movement for hip hop. And we understand hip-hop. you love Iggy Azalea. Yes. <laughs> that is Bay. That, that is Bay. That is Bay. Of a positive outlook on I as a thing. Like it's, it's, not only sight, but it's vision. It's where you see yourself going. It's what you see yourself doing. I think that if you can't envision something for yourself, you're never gonna get that accomplished. So I always pictured I as like, um, it being not only a vision thing, but also I relating to myself. So whenever I say I in a track, it's not only just meaning me, and when people speak my lyrics, I want them to say I meaning them. Your personal goals as a musician, and what do you want your fans to take away from your music? Personal goals, I mean, uh, for right now, I'm trying to get um, an LP done. I'm working on a Windows to Soul LP, which is going to probably come out sometime in March of next year. I'm trying to aim for the 3rd of March, as a matter of fact, for right now. Um, So that's going to come out soon. Um, Futuristic goals, I mean, I've seen a lot of talent in this area, and I really want to give that talent an outlet, you know, that really, even though it sounds, you know, bad, that artists like us really haven't got coming up, you know, so I want, I want to give kids an outlet, so I've always wanted to like either run my own management company or a uh, record company, I've actually put it in the early stages of getting funding and things of that nature, so I want to have like a Connecticut circuit so people can actually do performances, because it's harder to do, you know, a lot of people think you have to go to New York or you have to go to LA, and I, I don't believe that's true, I believe art can be found in the smallest places, and it just needs a way of getting known, and I want to be, you know, that route for some other people to take, you know, make it easier on next generation artists in this area anyway. As for people taking away from my music, I just want them to, you know, feel good. It's more of a feel good record type feel and, you know, I want them to know me. All right. Well, thank you, Eliezer, so much for being a part of this. Thank you. And best of luck with all your future musical endeavors. Thank you very much.